Hello again, everyone. This is Logan at Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Uh, we're going to do another round of YouTube questions. Um, these are questions that some of our viewers have asked in response to a few of our recent videos. So uh, most of these coincidentally do have to do with batteries. The first question is uh, kind of just a general one about flooded lead acid batteries. This viewer had asked, can the, basically do we need to put flooded lead acid batteries in an enclosure or can they be open? Totally depends on the application and where the equipment's installed. Flooded lead acid batteries, they will produce hydrogen gas as a factor of their um, charging process. So when you do charge the lead acid batteries hard or during certain processes of the charging stage, especially when you're equalizing those batteries, uh, they will produce hydrogen gas, obviously extremely flammable. Uh, you do not want that gas near any electrical equipment. Um, if you have batteries in a confined space and that gas builds up and there's any kind of a spark, it's a bad situation. So um, most cases we do ventilate our flooded lead acid batteries and typically a, a forced or an active ventilation system is best. So I'm talking um, some sort of a cooling fan or you know something mechanical to move the gas out of the space where your equipment's at. Um, if you have batteries installed outdoors, some people will put them you know, exterior to the house in a cabinet, for example. Maybe not as critical that we have a fan and something like that, but um, I think if you've got the batteries indoors, you're, you're typically looking at putting them in a cabinet with some sort of active ventilation system. Uh, we do offer DC battery ventilation fans. Um, they're made by a company called Zephyr. Uh, so those are up on our website. You'll see the, the link below um, so you can check those out. I think that pretty much does it for, for the flooded battery question. So thank you for that. So our next question, this one was in response to a specific video. Uh, this was our uh, Lance travel trailer uh, installation video. Uh, so the question asked for this uh, installation was why are the batteries under the bed instead of in the battery compartment of the trailer? Great question. The space where the existing batteries were in that trailer, one was not very large um, and then secondly the battery compartment was on the complete other end of not end but other side rather of the trailer compared to where the equipment was with the rv installations typically and this applies for a lot of off-grid too you want to keep your equipment your inverter your charge controller any loads you want to keep all that stuff close to the batteries as much as you can so rather than crossing the entire width of the trailer with heavy gauge cable to connect the batteries to the equipment. We did the batteries under the bed that did get them closer to the equipment, closer to the compartment where the inverter and the controller are. Um, so it just minimizes the wire runs, makes it a little cleaner and easier. The other big factor in that decision was temperature. So the lithium batteries that um, were in that video uh, and this is characteristic for most lithium, they don't let you charge when they're below freezing. The compartments on the Lance travel trailer, to my knowledge anyways, were not temperature controlled. So that was another decision, putting the batteries under the bed. They'll always be in a temperature controlled environment, so we don't really have to worry about them getting cold, and therefore um, they are able to charge those batteries at any time, you know, regardless of uh, what the outside temperature is. Obviously the lithium batteries completely sealed, there's no maintenance. Conversely to the previous question that I addressed, we don't need to do any ventilation with lithium. Um, so having them in the cab or in the rig, even if they're under your bed, really no risk at all in terms of safety. Um, so that's you know perfectly fine to have the batteries inside with you. That was about it for the Lance question, so thank you again, that was a good one. All right, and then the next two questions, I'll kind of lump these into one. They were asked about the same product. These questions are regarding the Outback North Star NSB 190 AGM batteries, the lead carbon batteries. 
So the first question on those, um, what is the maximum recommended discharge percentage, or in other words, how many amp hours can we pull out of those batteries before we need to recharge them? Given the lead carbon additives in those batteries, I do know that they hold up a little bit better in a partial state of charge environment. So if you have a, an instance where maybe we're not getting the batteries fully charged for that day, um, these can take that and still kind of get by. Now with that being said, the manufacturer, they do recommend 50% depth of discharge as your maximum. And um, that will get you 2,050 cycles. So that's what the batteries are actually rated to per the spec sheet. 2,050 cycles down to 50% depth of discharge. So in other words, regularly, you don't want to discharge the batteries more than halfway. If you do that every once in a while, it's okay, not really any long-term consequences, but if you're taking them down further than 50% every cycle, you just don't get as many cycles, so the batteries don't last as long. For reference, 2,050 cycles, if you break that down one cycle per day, it's about five to six year lifespan estimated for those batteries. Um, and then, as I said, partial state of charge, that occasional deeper discharge past the 50% mark is okay, um, but most, most applications you'd be limiting your discharge to 50% uh, with those batteries. This was the second question, um, just a real quick one on the NSB 190s uh, about the bus bars um, that come with those batteries. They do ship with uh, bus bars very short, maybe, I don't know, three to four inches long. And uh, those bus bars are intended to make your series connections. Uh, so for example, if you're getting four of those batteries, those are 12 volt batteries, and we put them in series to get 48 volts, you don't need any interconnecting cables. If you're doing parallel strings with the batteries, then you will need some interconnects, but uh, if it's all series, the bus bars ship with those batteries. So speaking of bus bars, that, that segues us into the next question. This question is about Simplify batteries and what bus bars might you use for those. So the Simplify batteries do not ship with any connection hardware. They do have terminal covers, but you don't get bus bars or cables with those. Uh, assuming you're asking about the 3.8 kilowatt hour size, which are available in 24 or 48 volts. Simplify has a couple bus bar options. So they have a pair of bus bars that will connect two batteries in parallel. They have another pair of bus bars that they offer that will do three batteries in parallel. Uh, these are, I guess I would call them mechanical bus bars. So it's literally a kind of a you know, metal strip with holes pre-drilled uh, that line up perfectly with the battery terminals, whether you have two or three. Now, above three batteries, uh, we will typically do a different type of a bus bar setup um, using another product that's called the Lynx Power In from Victron. Uh, that's definitely not the only thing that works, but we found it's pretty easy to put in. Uh, the Lynx is a thousand amp rated bus. It gives you I think five to six connection points for both the positive and the negative. And um, with lithium batteries, you can wire the batteries individually up to the common bus. As long as we've got same gauge and equal distant cable from each battery up to that bus, that solution works really well. Um, gives us equal resistance between all the batteries in the equipment. So now everything's charging and discharging at equal rates. And then above all of that, I think one of the big advantages in using something like the Lynx, for example, or um, uh, Midnight Solar, their MNBCB battery combiner, that'd be for bigger systems. But doing that external bus bar with cables usually sets you up a little bit better for future expansion. So maybe you're only starting with a couple batteries and we wanna put a couple more in you know, within a year or so. Um, definitely, I think you know one of the external bus bars with cabling that does work really nicely. Um, the last thing I'll mention on the Simplify busing is there's actually an enclosure um, from, from Outback Power uh, that will hold, I think it's either 
four. They've got a version for four batteries or six batteries for the simplifies. Those are the IBR racks uh, from Outback. And um, you know, if you were looking for a cabinet, some enclosure to put the batteries in with shelves, that's probably your best option. Um, it's all, you know, sized correctly, pre-made. Um, you get all the cables and connecting bus bars to go with that. So that's a that's a really clean way to connect the batteries in parallel as well. All right, and with that, that uh, we're about wrapped up with today's um, YouTube questions on batteries. Feel free to send us any additional questions and we'll be happy to get you guys another video soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment.